Welcome to the Audio Club. Today we will learn how to visualize music, how to see uh, with our eyes, what our ears hear. Uh, I have a treat for us now. We are listening to Mendelssohn's Octet, opus number 20. He wrote this piece when he was 16 years old. He wrote this music about 200 years ago. By this time he finished already writing 12 symphonies. So it's kind of treat uh, to hear something from 200 years ago. And I think this is the purpose of music, so we can do time traveling and go back in the past. So our first uh, comparison is between digital and analog. And of course we will use uh, art, beautiful money, painting for us as comparison. So this is the a scan from the original money. This is unaltered, so the colors are as they were scanned and uh, there's no added distortion, no added colorations. So let's see that if we use uh, analog or digital, what sort of changes does that introduce to the sound and I really recommend to watch this on as big a screen as you can to see the details on, on a cell phone this will be a completely uh, um, non-event uh, so let's go so this is how poor quality vinyl uh, appears so we have a lot of noise even though this is a clean record so, so if you have a, an entry-level vinyl setup, then uh, this is uh, how you perceive music through that. That there's a, a lot, uh, so it, it's like uh, the background noise comes up really high and obscures a lot of the detail level. But you still have a, a good uh, tone, so the colors are right even though they are kind of buried in, in a sea of uh, whitish noise and that happens because the stylus uh, doesn't have a good profile so it doesn't fit well in the groove and it just jumps jumps in the groove and then just skids all over and that's why it's picking up only very little signal so, so that's why the resolution disappears and that's why we have so much noise so when you have like a, a very dirty record and on a poor system then this is how it looks like when you have the pops and the cracks they show up as like big bigger or smaller blobs of uh, dark when you do not see i would i would say do not hear the music content uh, and interestingly when you're gear gets better if you have a higher quality stylus and uh, and it can make contact with the grooves better then it picks up much less uh, of these uh, botches of these uh, pops and and even then if you have dirt on your record dirt in the grooves you will still be able to hear the sound what's what's behind the pop and the pop is not part of the music, but it's, it's uh, separately in space. So you can still see the whole picture and, and you have a feeling that, that the, the, the pop happens in, in 3D, so like somewhere else, and you can see what's behind the pop. That's so uncanny about uh, high quality vinyl that uh, even though you have dirt on the record, if you are really bad with records keeping, which uh, there is no reason to be, just put it back into the sleeve after the play is over. Uh, but with high quality vinyl, if there's a pop, it, it happens as if it's not even coming from your stereo. It, it's like, like some, something else in the background and it does not affect uh, the music itself. So when you look at excellent vinyl, there is really hardly any detectable noise. Uh, people are often surprised that, that 
that noise floor on, on good quality recordings is just absolutely minimal. Uh, most people would think that, oh wow, I'm hearing a, a CD because there is no, no background. Uh, and, and often when you hear background on a really high quality vinyl, on a really high quality system, is the tape hiss. So it's not the vinyl's hiss, but, but, but the noise of the recording tape, but usually you can hear that only when you crank up the volume to really, really loud levels. So, so if you hear tape hiss, on a, for example, on an EMI recording, then you know that this will get extremely loud. So when we look at digital, this is how poor quality digital looks like. It blurs the image. And because of this blur, all the noise is gone. So, so every digital appears artificially noise-free because there is a blurring in the signal. Nobody ever is talking about this blurring effect of digital. Uh, because it happens at the digital to analog conversion, so it's caused because even though it's called digital, we are not using quantum computers. So the only case where it would be purely digital would be if, it, if the signal was stored in the quantum level. But uh, the technology is about, I would say, like uh, 50 years away <laughs> from the point where we can have quantum decks. And until that point, digital is not true digital. It is really analog, and because the signals, once they are read uh, from your CD into the memory, they are stored as voltage. So they are analog, really. But I will get into this in a separate video, because that's a huge, huge, gigantic issue. Uh, and. Um, it, it, it's a total game changer on how, how we see digital when you understand how it really works and what it does. So for now, uh, we can just see that digital blurs uh, the, the contents and, and thus it artificially removes not just noise, but a lot of the signal level. And uh, let's go for excellent digital. And this also uh, has a slightly blurred content, but the blur is minimal and it happens only to a level that it, it takes away natural noise that should be there in every recording. Because when uh, you are listening to anything in real life, there's always background noise. And that's how our ears work. Our ears need noise. If the uh, music or what you hear is artificially noise-free, it, it sounds unnatural. So that's why digital almost always sounds unnatural, because it is artificially noise-free. And, uh, and because of this uh, noise-free nature, this night blurring, it seems that the presentation is cleaner than the real life event was. So, so a digital recording, if it's very high quality on a very high quality system, it will sound cleaner than in real life. Um, and it's always, always more showy uh, than the original event was, and it creates an illusion of perfection. It has a slightly decreased dynamics compared to the original event, and has a higher contrast, so like blacker backs, whiter whites and no noise so essentially we just heard the definition of high resolution audio and that's what happening in high res because of its digital nature the digital conversion it creates this special effect this illusion that uh, all of these are enhanced so let's look at uh, uh, go, go back to analog and uh, before um, we did not take into account that there is an RIAA conversion on, on for vinyl. So it happens because uh, we cannot record bass properly onto the grooves, so we need to compress the signal. And uh, that's done with this RIAA conversion. 
So we are basically altering the tone of the colors and, and we, we record uh, on, on the vanya something that has different colors than what we see here and when we read it back we reverse that effect and restore the colors and uh, this uh, met the, the, the compression and decompression events uh, do not uh, match exactly so we always get some slight colorations if you have a, a really good phono stage and, and your RIAA filter matches the, the inverse uh, filter that was used for cutting, then you will see something that is extremely close in color balance to the original. And I have modified this, so there's a difference between the original and this, but your ears can hardly pick it up. And when you look at it, the eyes can hardly pick it up either. So both the senses work in a similar way. But now let's look at the scenario when the, uh, the conversion doesn't match. So this, this is what you get then. Uh, th this is when you have that outdated broken record sound. Like the music is washed out. People appear to be shouting into a horn, there's no bass, hardly any detail at all. And this is what happens uh, when you listen to uh, early mono recordings. And, it's, and, you, and they sound so bad and old, not because they are bad and old, but because we are playing them back with the wrong RIAA filter. So what is needed here is that we need to find the phono stage where you can change the uh, EQ curve for the playback between the modern RIAA and, and different uh, uh, filters. And if you can do that, if you have such a phono stage, then it will be astonishing because even early mono recordings, like for example transfers from uh, uh, 1920, can sound incredibly good and you would never think that they were recorded 100 years ago. I will uh, play a couple recordings like that which are a century old and uh, when I play it to friends they think that it was recorded maybe like uh, uh, recently because it sounds so good. Uh, so so this is one big consideration, just get a good RIAA filter. And this is where the uh, Hagerman violin phono stage comes into play, because Jim put in four different EQ curves, so I can enjoy uh, those old mono recordings. Now let's look at speakers. When we look at uh, speaker colorations, this is how uh, they would be. If, if we would see them on painting. So with frequency extension, if the top frequency is missing, it's like we are missing the sky, we are missing the top of the picture. So everything looks closed in, you see the majority of the painting, you can clearly recognize what's going on, but, uh, uh, but you wonder what, what would be in the sky. Is there, are there any more clouds there, more birds there, maybe, maybe an aeroplane or aliens, what's going on? Uh, the opposite scenario is when, when base is missing, then, uh, then it, it, the whole thing feels ungrounded and, uh, and you get the impression that the music is shrinking and, and it really has no foundation, um, but you still can see the, the majority of what's going on and, uh, and if you can uh, live with it then that's pretty good. Now we have this scenario where you can see only the mid-range, uh, so no skies, no grounding. Uh, this happens when you have a small size speaker with a limited tweeter, uh, or for example a full range driver scenario when you are just using a single driver uh, to produce the sound, then you have a very clear mid-range, so can clearly identify what sort of music you are listening to, but uh, but it, it, it's a little bit limited. However, the good thing about uh, mid-range only is that 
uh, this is uh, our brain so that's the auditory center of the brain and as you can see 90% of the brain processing power is this midrange so what we see here without the lowest octave and, and the highest octave that's uh, what our brain is built to work with so basically you can see that this big chunk here the blue part is is the auditory cortex and and this huge piece is from 500 Hertz to 16 kilohertz so basically 90% of our signal processing is for the mid-range and you see that below 500 Hertz we have hardly any processing power so basically uh, our ears or brain's uh, capacity to handle music starts at 500 Hertz and ends I would say not even at 16 kilohertz this happens when when uh, we are very young like children and as we age uh, this this part gets shorter and shorter and by the time uh, we reach adulthood most of us can hear only up to 14 kilohertz or maybe 13 kilohertz so so eventually uh, that's that's where the meat of the music is between 500 hertz and uh, 13 kilohertz if you are lucky then then your ears extend still to 16 kilohertz when you are older for men we lose our hearing uh, more rapidly than women and by the age of 40 uh, we are lucky to hear up to 10 kilohertz uh, I am super lucky because I can still hear up to 17.5 um, but that's also part of training so if you train your ears uh, you just get a signal generator and play sine wave test tones and then you can identify okay that's 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 how my ear is ringing now that's like 15 kilohertz and then you can just train and just look for what is the loud which, which is the highest frequency you can hear maybe like 12 kilohertz and then go like a few hundred hertz higher to see if you can hear that and just practice this like a couple of times a week and you will see that you can do improvement on it uh, so uh, one more thing to add about uh, mid-range about the musical range is that the region where we can tell a music note is between 64 hertz and 15 kilohertz uh, so so that's the range where music is so 64 hertz that's c2 uh, and uh, and that's uh, the low so below that that C2 we cannot tell the notes apart so if you hear like a fundamental frequency like a C1 or D1 or E uh, which are between 32 and 64 Hertz you cannot tell it was a C or D the only way we can tell those apart is when we listen to for example a church organ that has a fundamental C and and uh, there the the pipes always have upper harmonics so the 32 hertz note is not by itself it's accompanied by the 64 hertz note and the 128 hertz note 256 hertz note so we hear uh, a harmony uh, a range of uh, frequencies which start at 32 so that's why we can hear the lowest organ note if it was just 32 Hertz alone uh, it, it's barely audible and we could not tell that it's music it sounds more like rumbling or an earthquake so so if your speakers can uh, are excellent between 64 Hertz and 15 kilohertz then all the music notes are there and that's why people like uh, single driver speakers because they are they cover this range excellently so you will find a lot of musicians prefer these uh, uh, limited systems where you do not have a true uh, low end so you are missing the lowest one or two octaves uh, and you are missing uh, the really top end frequencies 
because even though you are missing those but the ones you have are of much higher quality than the extensions and that's what uh, most of the speakers manufacturers completely forget is that uh, the extensions uh, count very little uh, of course they they add a lot to the perception of music they define uh, uh, the, the space so if you do not have these then, then the recording sounds not so live it sounds limited but but this is what makes it tonally correct and that's where our ears and our brain are most sensitive so if you have the slightest problems in the middle of this range your ears will pick it up at the same time you can have major problems at the end and and your brain will not notice so that's why the obsession with, uh, with frequency extension is uh, uh, harmful because, in a way because it, uh, it uh, focuses uh, the, the frequency extremes and, and that it, it shifts much of the energy that we need to reproduce the signals to, to reproduce those really hard to reproduce regions and uh, and in a system in an amplifier and speakers the energy is finite so you can use for something so when you design speakers you have to make a choice are you tuning your speaker for for higher frequencies so it means that you can get a much better quality for higher frequency or you tune it to much lower to have better extension but then uh, that region suffers where where your hearing is really sharp so now let's look at uh, phase errors and uh, a phase when when you think about uh, um, the visual analogy it's like a polarized light so 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 for light it it's it's polarization and for frequency well that's polarization too so is it like negative polarity or or correct polarity and, and just like light, sometimes it's barely perceptible, so perception of phase depends a lot on, on your room acoustics as well. And of course, it uh, also depends on whether your uh, system is set up properly, so all your drivers are in phase in your speakers. If not, then, then uh, you won't get uh, phase correctly, because you are not getting correct phase and uh, just like uh, polarized light sometimes you can can see your computer screen without problem and when you shine some extra light on it like uh, the sun is uh, waking up or something and then you can't see your computer screen at all so a phase this is the most frequent thing that people experience uh, when you have two or three-way speakers with three-way speakers or I would say the vast majority of audiophile speakers have their mid-range out of phase. So it means that the mid-range uh, driver is, is connected in a reverse polarity and uh, when there's a reverse polarity, so now we can imagine this is our mid-range driver, this is our tweeter and that's our woofer. So when we connect something in reverse polarity, it, it feels as if there's a glare there's a sheen all over the the sound so it feels um, as if uh, uh, the the focus change changes from the mid-range so our ears and our brain is not interested in the mid-range anymore because it's really hazy and uh, unrealistic and and distant and loses grounding so so our ears pick up much more at, on the high frequencies and the low frequencies and that's why uh, speaker designers use this trick a lot for audiophile speakers to uh, to have the, the the highs pop out and the lows pop out that's why when you listen to these speakers then you have the impression wow i never heard this in the music and 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 that's wrong because you have heard it before but because uh, it, it was balanced 
uh, your focus is in the mid-range and when you mess up the mid-range by flipping the phase that's when your ears are focused to to hone on to the parts that makes any kind of sense for the brain so so it's kind of like a painting like your painting has been vandalized someone sprayed it over so now we have to use what we have use the highs and, and the lows so so eventually this creates a very showy sound and and the, eventually even the mid-range seems much more clear than uh, it normally does and and it seems clear because there's no information content there um, so if everything is out of phase this happens when you have a proper speaker it's like for example you are using quads uh, they 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 have the same phase for for all of their frequencies that because they produce sound together uh, so for quads you all quads are always phase correct that's why people love them because there are no phase errors so you get the picture as it is or <laughs> or the sound as it is however if you hook them up out of phase then everything seems hazy so so you can notice this just try this out on your speakers listen to them and then flip the negative and positive uh, terminals on on the speakers you can do it either at the speaker side or the amplifier side and 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 listen to the same song again and you will see that in one case uh, the bass kind of disappears there is no impact to the bass so if you he listen to drums then they sound as if the drums ha have shrunk and the impact is gone and uh, of course with quads this is somewhat limited because they do not reach so low in the music so usually you need subwoofers to create that impact effect but even even without a sub you can notice that the drums are shrinking uh, there's no no weight behind them and uh, and the mid-range it feels as if you are hearing ghosts so everything is becoming more distant uh, you, you cannot touch the sound it doesn't feel real the high frequencies they they became become screechy and annoying so so this is how you can uh, uh, guess that if if you hear th this kind of sound anywhere on a stereo then then there's a very good chance that the problem is not with with the amplifiers or the speakers or that system but it's because the speakers are connected out of phase once in, uh, i had a very uh, remarkable experience with phase this was at the very beginning of my audiophile career in uh, budapest at the high-end show i heard a system and it was using the bnw nautilus speakers and it had eight monoblocks driving it so one monoblock per channel and the monoblocks were aliska orange brand and those monoblocks were the amplifier of the year at that time i think this was in 1998 or 99 something like that about 20 years ago and that system sounded absolutely horrid uh my brother was there with me and, uh, and he was uh, nine years at that time and uh, and he was uh, he, he was telling me that Janos your cassette tape deck with, with your headphones <laughs> sounds much better than this and uh, and he was right and I, I was I didn't understand why the sound is so bad but uh, thinking uh, back of that experience uh, I can recall that it sounded bad because they they connected everything out of phase, so that's why, so that's what it does to the sound. So so if it's in bad polarity, there's no impact. It sounds substanceless, really annoying top end. And of course, they also demoed gear which was not broken in, uh, and when when a system is not broken in amplifiers and speakers, then then it also has a, a sound which is similar to hearing things out of phase so you do not hear impact 
and uh, and there's more distortions and screechiness in the high frequencies and uh, you can also have the situation when uh, one of your speakers is hooked up with wrong polarity and then only one channel is out of phase this happens uh, when this happens then there is no center image so there uh, so here we see like a huge break between left and right and that happens with your ears too so our brain cannot put together a center image if one channel is out of phase so so you if if you have that situation that no matter what you are trying with your speakers placement doesn't matter what uh, music you are listening to there there is no sound coming from the center it's always left and right even if you hear one singer singing you hear the person singing from both left and right channels then this is your problem so then flip uh, the negative and positive polarity on one of the speakers only on either the left or either the right and then if uh, your problem is solved now you can hear one person singing in the middle then your problem was this that one channel was out of phase and in that case try out that once you have flipped the phase and you have the center image then listen to that does it sound uh, hazy and ghost-like it's kind of like angels are singing and not people then then try to flip the face for both of the speakers again so left and right and then you can uh, come back to the correct polarity now this is what mono would look like you do not see colors and uh, the the huge advantage of mono is that there are no phase errors between left and right channels when you are listening to mono and uh, and, it, and that's why it feels much more right uh, than than stereo because uh, there is no uh, no discolorations like this so even though you get this when left and right are imbalanced there's a limited effect like this if your room acoustics is not perfect so if you have a perfect room then you are okay with stereo but if your room is not perfect so so left and right sides are imbalanced for example on the, on the left side here you have a glass window and on this side you ha your living room extends let's say like uh, 16 feet more than the other side then you will have a situation like this a major imbalance between channels so for that your solution might be to listen to mono because uh, with mono you have much less room interaction so for example uh, at uh, when i was living uh, in makiki area uh, then uh, i just couldn't get stereo image in, in the room there was no way i tried everything but it didn't work and when I tried listening to mono, then it just sounded fantastic and I had sound stage and everything. And it's because if you have too many room interactions, then uh, when you have a single source, uh, you have much less diffraction and, and, and your ear is capable of making out uh, a good image. Uh, also with mono, because of this effect, dynamics is better perceived so so if there are no interferences from left and right channel there's only one source then uh, there is no uh, no um, diffractions and no uh, blending of sound waves and, and cancellations happening so that's why we, we perceive better dynamics and also it, mono has better substance delivery so you can you can feel the music at a much deeper level because there are no uh, distractions coming from your room and, and, and if you really want to hear how your speakers are whether they are good or bad just listen to them in mono so listen to one speaker only and then you can tell how they sound because when you listen to two speakers at the same time that masks a lot of the problems that speakers have 
so so professionals know that uh, if you want to assess whether speakers are good or bad and under that I mean do they have uh, colorations like sig do they significantly alter the music or not then you have to listen to them in mono because with, with two speakers they uh, they do a lot of tricks with room interactions and and it it takes your brain years to figure out whether you truly like the sound whether the sound makes sense is it real or not and on the other hand if you listen only to one channel right away you can tell whether you like the speakers or not so you can save a lot of time uh, if if when you are looking for speakers to listen to them in mono as well to listen to one speaker and if you like that sound then those are sp those speakers are for you if you really dislike the sound of one speaker playing then a pair of those speakers are not for you even though in the beginning you will find wow this is awesome sound but but uh, six months in you will be really tired and bored of them and that's part of why uh, you you burn out with things because uh, because it, it it takes a long time for you to consciously recognize what your brain recognizes subconsciously right away and there is another scenario when you listen to mono but with two speakers so this happens when uh, when you have a stereo system and you play a mono recording on a stereo system and in such a case you get also a excellent 3d sound so it doesn't sound that that uh, what what people think of mono that it's it's flat it's coming from a point it becomes a 3D sound, the musicians are in your room, they are not cramped up to a single spot, they have their locations. If your room is perfectly symmetrical, then they will be in the center, but not sitting on top of each other, but one will be closer to you, so for example, like the, the, the pianist will be in the middle, the double bass behind the pianist and the singer right in front of you and they will also sound from a different height so the singer will be singing from uh, from maybe like uh, five feet high and uh, and and the piano will be coming at a lower level so so they are not cramped up on each other and if your room is not symmetrical so for example on one side you have a staircase or an open kitchen or something then because of the acoustic imbalance uh, it will create a fake uh, left and right uh, uh, image as well for mono so so the instruments will be a little bit separated towards the left and the right and and if you have such a such a room then uh, then a two speakers mono will create uh, a, th a completely 3d sound and and uh, unless you tell people you are listening to mono no one will ever think that it's a mono recording. Everyone will swear you are listening to stereo. So our next part will be understanding uh, how crossovers, uh, what kind of errors crossovers introduce to the speakers. So in general, if you have a higher order crossover, that introduces a higher error and the more drivers you have the more bands of errors are introduced to the sound but let's see so for example let's take the case of the simplest case then you have uh, two drivers a tweeter and then the mid-range driver and and the mid-range driver which also works as woofer it's running full range so there's no crossover on it and because it doesn't reach high enough we put a tweeter on it but we put a capacitor on the tweeter to protect it from being overloaded with low frequencies and that's a first order crossover and in this case you can see here there is a slight uh, haziness because of the overlap between woofer and tweeter and it causes a little bit of uh, loss and, uh, and, and to focus in the mid-range but but you still have a really good uh, image however 
the problem with with these two driver system is even though you have that tiny loss in the mid range, but it cannot reach down. So you also have a lack of uh, low end frequencies. So you need a subwoofer to it. So we either we add a subwoofer, or what people have uh, come up with is three-way drivers. So instead of adding the separate subwoofer, you put the subwoofer into the cabinet, and then you have a three-way driver. But for but usually when you go for a three-way driver, you want to be also able to listen to it at higher volumes and to play music at higher volumes uh, you need to make crossovers higher order and and that will let the speakers uh, play louder and uh, but when you employ higher order crossovers they at, at the crossover region they they interfere much more with the sound so this is where the tweeter and the mid-range meets there is there is a really strong smear and this is where the mid-range and the woofer meet. There's also a smear there. So, so when people get bored with this situation, that they can uh, not hear part of the sound, part of the music, then they go to full range speakers, which is where this uh, distortions do not exist because there is no crossover. And, and in that case, you have single driver speakers and it's really nice because you have clarity in the mid-range but you are missing top end and bottom end so uh, there is a this is the extreme situation when you have uh, six drivers for example there are speakers who, which have this complexity and they use such complexity because uh, each driver has to work over very little frequency range so they are very happy to do that however to mate them together you need extremely steep crossovers and uh, and people uh, sometimes uh, do this thing that they uh, put in the drivers out of phase wheels on audio does this thing so that when you listen to the mid-range it, it's out of phase and the upper mid-range it's uh, it's in phase and then you go to the high frequency it's out of phase again and uh, and they do that across the entire sound and uh, what it does is that this pops out certain frequencies so for example like here the upper bass becomes really really apparent and that's where your focus is and the upper mid-range is also really uh, uh, in focus so 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 this in phase out of phase trick is used to uh, direct your attention and for Wilson audio they use it to direct your attention to the mid bass and the and the upper mid range so that's why they sound really high resolution because of this thing happening and the next will be understanding listening volume but that will be our second part thank you for tuning in